by this point in your study of the five solas, you've realized that these terms are more than just cold theological categories, that they are more than just head knowledge. The importance of the gospel, the authority of God's gracious gift of his revelation, that God saves and redeems rebel creatures by his grace through faith based on the work of Christ, are all reminders of the majesty, goodness, love and supremacy of God. These truths, when inspired by the Spirit, written down by biblical authors, taught by the early church, and fiercely defended by the reformers, are intended to move us to worship. And that's where we wrap up our study. We've looked at the heart of the Reformation, which is the Gospel. We've looked at the foundation by which we know God and the Gospel, which is His Word. We've looked at the means of justification and salvation, which is grace, faith, and Christ. This session, we look at the glue that holds it all together, the glorification of God alone. Earlier in our session on grace, we considered how we need to know ourselves and understand our nature in comparison to the God we approach and worship. The supremacy and the sovereignty of God means that all things exist to His glory and to His glory alone. I love how Pastor John Piper defines God's glory. He says it's not something that he owns. Rather, God's glory is the radiance of his worth and beauty and greatness of God himself. The godness of God manifested to be spiritually seen and savoured and shown by his redeemed people. And this glory, this goodness, this greatness is revealed in the things he has made and the things he has done as recorded in scripture for us. As the Lord says in Isaiah 43, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory. You see, our existence is ultimately for his glory. We have other purposes, yes, but even they are ultimately for the glorification of God. And later in chapter 48, speaking of the sanctification of his people and his mercy, he says, For my own sake, for my own sake I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory I will not give to another. The works of God are done for his glory. Yes, he is moved by his love and compassion for us, but again, ultimately, it is for his glorification. And note the end of that verse. My glory I will not give to another. The glory belongs to him alone. And the work of God that is definitely worthy of our praise is our salvation. In 1 Corinthians 1, Paul writes, and because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And again in Romans 3, speaking of the crucifixion, it was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No but by the law of faith. We cannot take any glory or boast in our salvation. It's all of God. As Calvin has written, we must conclude that man cannot without sacrilege attribute one drop of righteousness to himself, for that is to diminish and degrade the glory of God's righteousness. It is for this reason that the Bible teaches that in all spheres of our lives, from our salvation to our worship and service, to our family and to our vocation, all things exist soli deo gloria to the glory of God alone. Now, while the Catholic Church in the time of the Reformation and today don't deny that there is a degree of glory that belongs to God alone, the previous souls that recognized the perfection of God's work, the sufficiency of God's grace and the completeness of Christ's sacrifice gave this understanding a kind of boost and lengthened the divide between creation and creator. And this conviction of soli deo gloria had an influence on the reformer's life and it should for us as well. This is expressed clearly in Colossians 3 when Paul wrote, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Note the qualifier, whatever. There is no divide between the religious and spiritual and the material and earthly. All of life should be of worship. But scholar David Van Drunen in his masterclass on the solas has a good reminder for us on this. He explains that while it's important to remember it's good to ask, well, what can I do to glorify God? We need to be careful we don't make it too much about us and what we do. We need to remember that it's all about him and what he has done. 
God will be glorified in all that he does. He is glorious. And God's word reveals to us that his creation and our salvation reflects his glory. And what can we do but respond in worship, praise and service? Music